So, welcome and thank you for joining this hands-on session. Um, I'm going to try and get you from zero to data hero with Einstein Analytics. Uh, we're going to focus on the data side, uh, but I am going to show you some UI features as well. Um, so my name is uh, Ricky Hovgard, and um, I'm a Einstein Solution Architect with Salesforce. I'm based out of London, um, and I'm part of our ACE team, which is Analytics Center of Excellence, uh, which is part of our product side. So don't do sales. Don't know anything about licenses, prices, and stuff like that. Um, first of all, just thank you to all the sponsors. Without the sponsors, we weren't we wouldn't be able to be here. We wouldn't be able to have this amazing event. So huge shout out to those. Um, also, I am Salesforce, so I'm going to show you this, which is our forward-looking statement slide. If you are making any uh, purchases, please base those decisions on what is currently available in the software. I am actually going to see if I can demo something that is going to be up and coming, which we call um, Moana uh, or Smart Data Prep. Okay, So it's going to be Smart Data Prep. So what I will be covering today is, first of all, just give a little bit intro um, to what uh, data is in Einstein Analytics. Um, and again, for those that are new, we have the developer work here. There's a link to get that. We also have the files that you'll be need to kind of do our hands on. Um, so make sure you get those. So yeah, we'll be talking a few, just a few slides on uh, data in Einstein Analytics. Well, we'll stop talking about data sync and connections and what that all means for you. And then we'll go into the hands-on, um, and I will then afterwards demo some of the up-and-coming features, okay? So every day that we are going to work, every day that we, you know, even in our private life, we are locking a lot of data. And we really want to have an insight into this data. We want to understand what is our status, um, how well am I doing? But the thing is, we can't really get insight if we don't have the data. So it's important that we actually register our data and lock it correctly and have a clean way of doing that. Once we have that, um, Einstein Analytics is a great way to kind of dig into all our data and start sorting because with all this data, it's really hard to kind of find what we're looking for. So that's where we're using these analytics tools. Now, in Einstein Analytics, the way that it works is um, we have a, a few assets here. Um, we have our sources over here. So we have any data that we can bring in, our core Salesforce data, but we can also take uh, databases, external databases and CSV files and pull it into Einstein <coughs> Analytics. We do that through our data flow. And in this process, we're actually doing some data prep. We are um, taking our data, uh, relational data, uh, and we are actually putting into a flat file similar to an Excel file. We're doing this because when we, are, when we need to query our data in Einstein Analytics, we want it to be fast. So by flattening the file, we are also indexing every single dimension that we have, so any contextual things about your data. Um, and that actually makes everything a lot faster. Uh, think about it as, as an index in the back of your book. So you are um, reading a book. In the back of it, there is an index. So if I tell you where do I find Einstein Analytics, you know exactly which row or which line, uh, which page in your book you have to go and look at. So that's similar to what we're doing here. Now, once we have our data set, um, so that's, that's what we're pulling out of our data flow that's being registered as a data set, uh, we can start exploring that. We can, what is... Uh, the sum of amount, what is uh, by stage, that's a single exploration that is going to be our lens. We also have our dashboard, which is a collection of different explorations that we're putting into uh, one uh, dashboard, so similar to what we have in, in Core Salesforce as well. So just if you're used to working, how many are uh, used to working with standard reports in Salesforce? few of you. Um, so data set is kind of like a re your re report type, how are we structuring the data, lens our report, dashboard, well that's our dashboard. All of this is wrapped in an app, uh, so similar to our folder, so that's where we're storing all our assets. Still time to get your developer org and get the file, highlighting that. <laughs> so in Einstein Analytics we have to switch things a little bit uh, around. Um, the way the data works, works a little bit different. So if you're coming from the core side, it's nice to kind of see this slide because with standard reports, we are looking at um, having our account at the top level, right? 
And then we start going downwards in the hierarchy. So we take opportunity, we take opportunity line item. That's how our, our um, um, what's it called, our um, structure in, in, uh, or in Salesforce is. In Einstein Analytics, we switch it around. So we actually take from the most detailed level, the lowest grain, which is in this case our opportunity line yeah. item, that is our root, and we move upwards in the hierarchy. In Einstein Analytics, we're not restricted by a direct level. So here in standard report, we go one level down, and we can't really uh, combine it like we have over here. Um, and also, another thing is we don't, we're not restricted to three levels. So if you have multiples at five levels, you can go ahead and do that in Einstein Analytics, as long as it makes sense, right? So I've said that we're actually bringing data from Salesforce over into Einstein Analytics. So I get a question a lot. Is so we're taking it back away from Salesforce. What you know, we're no longer storing in the same data center. We are. We're using the same data center as, as core setup, um, and we're actually leveraging some of the same parts. So if you look at the visualizations between core and, and Einstein Analytics, they're similar. We're using the same administration, the sharing, all these things. We're also using backup and, and those features over, over in core. But we have a dedicated part that um, is just dedicated to Einstein Analytics, and that's going to be um, where we're pulling in our data, or where we're using our data flow, we're kind of like flattening the file. We have our data set, and we also have our query engine. So this kind of give you a little background. Now, there is more to this data story. Um, so we actually have the, uh, the, the option to enable what we call data sync. And by this, we also get um, connectors. And this allows us to get access to a lot more data than we have in, in core Salesforce. Because reality is, we have data everywhere, right? And we want to have access to that. We might, might want to combine it in with our Salesforce data. So we can do that. So with the connectors, these are some default out-of-the-box connectors that we get. Um, you can see here, these are just some of them. There are many more. There's a lot on the roadmap as well. Um, so definitely check out with all release um, if there's new connectors that you might be able to leverage. However, uh, by the way, so you don't necessarily need to use the connectors. You can get the external data in other ways as well. So if you have uh, data where we don't have a connector, you can still get it in. So before we talk about what does it mean if we have data sync, let's talk about what it means if we don't have it. So when we run our data flow, when we're registering our data set, so we're, we're creating this data that we want to do our reports on, we're running our data flow. Now at this point, there's going to be an extract part. This is taking the Salesforce objects and it's doing a full extract. It's doing the transformations that we want and then it's putting it into a data set. Now if we enable this data sync, we get a little bit more. So we actually get, we have the same thing here. So you can see we have our Salesforce objects, but we also have our connector. Um, so we can grab this data in, and we're actually syncing it into a cache-free layer. And um, this is going to be laying here. So when we're running our data flow, we don't have to go and take all this data out from Einstein Analytics, or from core Salesforce. Um, it's already stored right here. So that's making the process a lot faster. And it also allows you to combine data a lot more freely, OK? By the way, so I see people taking pictures. You're allowed to do that completely fine. I have in the resources, the slides are there as well. So all of it is, is there, including the exercises I'm doing. So the data landscape, so I said that we can actually bring data in from several different sources. So you see here, these are just some of the connected sources that we have. Um, and that goes into this cache-free layer that we're talking about. Once we have this uh, cache-free layer, we can go ahead and build our data sets however we want. So this is kind of the blue lines that is illustrated over there. We, of course, have our CSV files. They go directly in as a data set. And then we also have the option to use some kind of middleware or direct integration, um, pushing data from external sources, external databases into a data set. Now, once we have all this, all these data sets, we can actually use all this data to create more data more data sets, okay? So we can take any of these existing data sets and reuse them in a recipe, or we can reuse them in a new data flow. And this is what we're gonna be looking at today and see how we can actually do that. Does this make sense so far? Yeah. I know it's a lot of data early in the morning, so I hope I ha you had your coffee. So I want to do a few things together with you guys. 
Um, the first thing is, I just want to show like a quick demo of a few things, and then we're going to get hands on. Uh, so this is where the, um, the files and the um, developer org is coming handy. But what we're ultimately going to try and do, we try to make it local, so we have a Spanish map, some data about house, uh, house, houses sold. Uh, so we're going to do a time series, and we're going to do a Spanish map as well. Okay, so just to kind of know uh, what we're actually going to be doing. Okay, so uh, as you can see, you have all the slides in here, so I'm not actually, uh, I'm switching away from the slides now, but if you want to look afterwards and see the slides, um, it's all in there with the details of what we're trying to do. So this is really, really zoomed in. So let's, I'm zooming out, so let's see, hopefully this works. So hopefully you're familiar with this screen. This is just my developer org. Um, this is just the setup. When I'm enabling data sync, when I'm enable anything around Einstein analytics, I can go in here and search for analytics, if it works. And you will now see that I have, hopefully down here, settings right here, okay? So settings is where I can go in and I can enable my data sync. This is by, in production work, by default uh, disabled, uh, unless, yeah, you've enabled it, of course. But um, in our work, the one that I had you create is already enabled, okay? So this is where you will go in and do that. Um, the next thing that I just wanted to show you is um, go in to Analytics Studio, so right here. And here we have the uh, UI. Again, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. Um, so here we actually have our UI. All the different things, all the assets that we're talking about, you can find those up here. Now one thing I just want to highlight, when we're dealing with data, we want to work in the data manager. And you can also see here, we have actually a link here to the data manager. I want to highlight the community and learn as well. These are excellent sources for getting some additional help. Now I want to go in to my data manager, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the data manager here. And if you're following along, that's okay, you can do that now, because uh, we're going to be working in the data manager in a little while. Anyway, else I will guide you in there in a little bit. Okay, so this is our data manager. The first thing that we see is this monitor. This is a log of anything that happened in, in Einstein Analytics in regards to our data. So um, you can see a lot, there's probably a lot more from me than there is for you. Um, but you can see this is just a log of, of things that have happened, things that have run. Um, and if you're looking at summer, this is actually changing a little bit in summer, so just if you had a sneak peek of, of that yet. Um, here is where we have our data flow and recipes. We're going to be looking at that in a little bit. Here is where we can see all the different data that we have here, all the different data sets. And here is where we have our connected sources. If you do not have the enable uh, data sync, this is not actually part, it's not in, in your data manager. So I'm going to click on the uh, connect so you can just kind of see how that works. So you can see I have all these different sources here. I'm just going to uh, just remove some of them or uh, collapse them. So you can see I have my Salesforce local data, but I have also gone in and I've done a multi-org connector, and I've also enabled this for my marketing cloud connector. So I can now go in and pull data from these uh, different sources in my data flow and use that as my in my data set. Here you see the connect to data. This is where all of it works. So you can go in and, and look at what objects more do you want to enable for these connectors that you have already up and running. Um, or you can click on this plus to go ahead and add one more uh, connector. So we can click on, on basically any of these and you'll see it's pretty simple of, of getting this connector up and running. And let me just see if I can move this so you actually can see all of it here. Um, so here you'll see that it's just about putting in some credentials, some um, um, usernames, some passwords, and then you actually have an up and running connection. So once you have this, let me just go ahead and click on the back. Let's take our demo org. You can now see these, are, I have enabled the account, but I can go in and maybe I wanted to enable, I don't know, case. Can click on the case, click continue, and I now get to select what fields from the case object do I want to bring in. Once I have that, I click continue, and then I can just sync this data over so it's ready for me to use anywhere. 
So I'm going to jump out of this because um, we're not really going to use those connectors, but I think it's really useful for you guys to, to know um, that that's there. Now, I want to show you one more thing, and that's how we generally create a data set. I decided that's kind of when you see it, it's pretty simple, so we're not going to do that. We're going to reuse some, but I thought I just wanted to show you uh, how that works. So you can do this directly from the UI as well. I'm going, doing it from the data side. Uh, so I'm in a data flow here, and don't worry, we'll get back to the data flows. So here, I can go ahead and click on my um, uh, uh, data set launcher, and let's just call this test because I am really bad at names. Um, and I really have to zoom out now quite a lot. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is talk about that lowest level, that most detailed grain that I wanted to deal with. So if we're replicating what we did before with opportunities and accounts, then I go in and find my opportunity, okay? So you can see here I also have custom objects, so it doesn't really matter if it's a, a custom or um, standard objects, as long as we have access to it. So now I have my root here, and if I hover over, there's this little plus uh, symbol. So I can click on that, and now I have available, available all the fields that we have, and we can just start selecting different ones we want. Um, I'm not going to select all of them. I think you kind of get the point of how we're actually selecting data and adding it in. But notice up here, we have this relationship tab. If I click on this relationship tab, I have all the different objects that are related to opportunity. So if I wanted to join in account, if I wanted to join in our owner, as we had in the example, you can see I have that possibility. Even if I go to my account, you can see I can go ahead again and click on a relationship. So maybe I want to have the owner from that as well. And we can start building our data set this way. Okay? So this is how it actually works to create it from, from um, uh, this view. I'm going to close this down. I'm not going to save it um, because I have a few other things that we want to do. So now is the time, if you want to be hands-on, uh, where hopefully you got your developer or up, up, up and running. Um, so if you go into um, uh, your developer org, are you in the data manager or anybody needs help to how we navigate to the data manager? So if you are in settings, whoops, I have a, let me just remove this one down here. Um, so if you're in settings, which is kind of the default, then go ahead up here in the top right corner. Yes. This is the URLs, okay? And make sure that you are in um, the data side. Everybody got the UL? Yeah, no? Don't worry, I mean, if you don't get to be hands-on right now, I just said all of this is in the slides. So you can go back and you can do all this. I'm not gonna remove the files either. So you have all that to kind of play with. So from settings, what we want to do is we want to go up to our top right corner and have the app launcher and we're going to select Analytics Studio, okay? So now we have Analytics Studio open and remember we can go ahead down here and grab our data manager. I actually am a little bit legacy user so I am up in the gear icon and you can also access it from here. Whichever way rocks your boat, that's how you're going to do it, okay? So we're now in a data manager, and the first thing that I want you guys to do is I want you to click on this connect tab, okay? Now the next thing I want you guys to do is next to this SFDC local, yours is not looking the same, they're probably orange, correct? Yeah. So you're going to go ahead and click on this little arrow where it's actually scheduled, and you're going to click on the run now. Okay, so now we're just making sure we have fresh data in here because there's been some things, so it's not actually updated all the data yet. So you'll go now to your monitor and you can see how everything is queued or even running, okay? So while we're waiting for that, 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to play with a recipe because that data is already there. So this can kind of have its own life. And then hopefully when we're ready to use it, um, uh, it's there. So we're going to now go and click on the data flow and recipe tab. Okay. And notice I have two tabs here. I have the data flow and I have the data set recipes. We're going to start with the data recipes. Um, and this is actually the most UI friendly way of doing our data prep. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click on the blue button that is called create recipe. And uh, we're going to choose the opportunity data set. Okay. So there should be already one in here that is called opportunity data. Oh, opportunity, sorry. So we're clicking that. And then we now need to give our data set a name, so or recipe a name. So I'm going to call it data. Uh, no, actually, let's call it Dream Ole Recipe. Okay. Once we have that, go ahead and click on Next. And now we see a preview of all our data. The interesting part is also over here where we have our transformation panel. Right now we don't have any transformation, so we're gonna make a change to that. So the first thing, if we're gonna scroll over, you can see that we have um, an amount field. Actually, it's all the way in the end, so let's go ahead and click on the amount. And what I want to do is I wanna select the uh, formula. We're going to see how we can actually do a formula. Now in here, I can either select the columns that I want to use so I can start typing. I know that I want to create an amount field that is just adding 15% to it. So we have like a fee, additional fee. So I'm playing with data here. So we're going to start typing amount. And you'll now see that it kind of pops up here. So we're just going to click on that and it comes in. This is the API name. So we don't have to do anything else. Then we're going to go ahead and click on um, uh, the star, so we actually have a multiply. And then 1.15. Now you can go ahead and do all funky stuff, so we can do round if we only want to have two decimals. Um, I think I have that in the slides, just so you can do a little bit more. But right now we're just going to go ahead and click on the add. Okay. So you now see that we have our new computed field over here. And if I click on this, I can actually go ahead and click on the attribute as well, and I can give it a new name. So by, by default, it's going to call a um, formula, but we want to call this maybe um, amount fee. The next thing that I want to do, and hopefully, I'm just going to quickly go over here and see if it's done. All of mine is done, so hopefully yours is done as well. Um, so we're here, so now we want to see how can we add data in. So we're going to go ahead up here. You have a little button that is called Add Data, okay? So we're going to click on that. And um, we're not going to take any of these existing data sets. We're actually going to go ahead and click on the connected data. Was that mine? Okay. And we're going to select the user object. Okay. I'm going to keep this, but for some reason it didn't work yesterday when I tried to do it on the ID. Obviously, the ID is the best way to do it but I didn't have time to figure out why it didn't work. So we're going to keep that. That's fine. But if I scroll all the way down, you can now see these are the fields that I have from my user object that I can bring into this data set. So let's just go ahead and click on the active one. We want to make sure that our users, what, whether or not they're active, that we want to bring into our data set. So we can select any of these, uh, but just make sure you select the first one or the, um, the active part. And once we have that, go ahead and click on the done. Oh, by the way, you can also add multiple key pairs. So if you want to have a composite key, that is possible to do as well. So let's go ahead and click on Done. And we'll now see that we have our full name. That is the one that we're mapping on. But we also have the active, which is the field that we wanted to bring in. Right? There's a lot of different functions. There's one in the exercise, how to do bucket on stage and all this. Um, 
Um, I'm not, I'm not going to do that right, right now, but there's a few more things in the slides if you want to have a play with it. So let's go ahead and click on the create now. So we're going to create our data set. And you can see now, these are all the different fields that we have selected. Notice that all the fields that we didn't select are still here, but they're just not checkmarked. So I can go in, for instance, and say the full name. I don't want to have that twice, so I'm going to remove that because notice it's coming from our base, the user here, right here. Um, so we don't want to bring that in twice because we already have it in our opportunity data set. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on continue. And then we're going to run this recipe. Now, the next thing that I want to show um, is I want to just show you how we can uh, build a data flow. I wanted to do some XMD, but I'm going to do that afterwards, um, uh, how we can modify our displays as well. Uh, so we're going to return back to this data set, but right now we actually want to import that, new, that file that I had you download. So hopefully I have it out here. So make sure you're back in your data manager. And you can now see for me, if I just click on the refresh, my recipe is, well, it already completed successfully, so that's great. Um, but basically, um, uh, this is where you'll then see like what is the progress. Now we want to go ahead and click on this data tab, and we can probably now see that we already have our Dream Olay recipe. We want to create one more data set. So we're going to click on the Create Data Set up here, and again, you can do this from the UI as well. And we're going to take in the data that we have, which is called Spain data that I had you download. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and click on next. And then one more next. Here we have to be a little bit careful because notice each one of these are defined either as a text field or as a measure. My year is also a measure because it's a number, so it kind of automatically the text that it should be a measure, but it's not because we can't calculate on a year. So we want to go ahead and change, just select the year and then change over here to a dimension. Okay. Once we have that, we can just go ahead and load. And this is the favorite part. You see a little animation. Um, yeah. He never really gets done, I don't know, so I always just click on close when I'm done, just like smiling over that anima animation. So just go ahead and click done, and he should, it should probably already be there, so if I just go back and then go back here, um, you can hopefully see I have my Spain data, okay? So let's go back to our data flow and recipes tab. Uh, what we want to do now is create a brand new data flow. Okay, this is another enablement of enabling data sync. We can actually have multiple data flows. So we want to go ahead and click on this create data flow. And uh, we're going to call this, let's call it Dream Olay. That way you know where you created it, why you created it. Let's go ahead and click on create. And then we have our, um, our data flow. Okay, this is all blank now. Up here, you'll notice here the different transformations that we can do. And I just wanted to show you a few ones here. Again, I'm not going to do all the exercises I have in the slide. There's a few more things in there. Um, but I thought, let's just do a very simple, basic, if you are completely new to this, uh, let's do a completely basic uh, data flow from scratch without that data set builder. Okay? So we're going to click here, the Edge Mart. Edge Mart allows us to reuse an existing data set. So we're going to click on the Edge Mart. And we are going to call this is best practice. Just call it something that has to do with the transformation you're doing. Else, you have no idea what you're looking for once you are, you know, have a very complex data flow. So I'm always calling it Edge Mart and then underscore uh, Spain data. Okay. Let's go ahead and then in the data set we're clicking that, and then you'll notice that we have a few things here, but we want to select the Spain data here. Okay, so make sure you select Spain, and then you can go ahead and click on Create. This is our very first node, our very first transformation or part of our um, uh, data prep. Um, and we're going to go ahead now and add a transformation in. We want to do a compute expression. It's kind of similar to a formula. It's not really the same. It's just named different things uh, in Einstein Analytics. So we're clicking on that. And the first thing we have to do is, again, give it a name. So I'm going to call this compute. 
underscore date, okay? So you saw that we had the year, that's not a full date, and I wanna do a time series after, so I need to have an actual date, so I'm gonna generate my own date. So the source is going to be the edge mark we just created. There's only really one option, option for us to select, so we're gonna select that. And now we can go ahead and add our fields. We can add multiple fields. In this case, we're just gonna add one. So click on the plus add field. And what do you think we're gonna use? What output, what type? Is it gonna be a text number or a date? A date, right? We're gonna create our new date. So I'm selecting the date. Oh, by the way, I probably should give it a name. So let's call it date. In uh, name and label. Now in the SACL expression, SACL is Salesforce Analytics Query Language. Um, that is a, just something you have to learn the syntax, but once you have the syntax, it's quite easy. Um, well, anything is easy when you know it, right? So, um, so it will get easier, right? But right now, it's actually gonna be a very simple one. We're gonna use a date, so we're gonna have, to, in lowercase, we write two, and in uppercase, we write a D, and then uh, complete it with date. So two date, but the capital D. We're gonna have a start and end parentheses. And in this uh, uh, to date function, we need to first put in what is our uh, fields that we want to use, and then we have to use the format. So the first thing is we're gonna have single quotes, we're gonna have two of those, and in between it, we're gonna put year, illustrating we're calling that API name year from our data set. I just remember that's what it's called. Sometimes you have to go back and check what it's called. We're gonna put in a plus after the single quote, and after we have the plus, we're gonna have two double quotes, okay? So here it's where we're gonna go ahead and put in what is the last part of our format or our last part of our date. So this is gonna be a dash. It's going to be 01-01, okay? So we're taking the year and then we're just adding month and date, which is gonna by default be 1st of January, okay? After our double quote, we're gonna put in a comma and then we're gonna have a space because now we need to put in what is the format of this string. Is it year, month, day, or what is it? So we're gonna put in two double quotes and then we're gonna have in lowercase four Ys for year because we're having 2018 or whatever the number is. We're gonna have dash. And we're gonna have a capital two M's because they also think it's minutes if we have it lowercase and then one dash, and then we have lowercase double d for day, okay? One thing I always forget is down here in the date format, it doesn't look like it's mandatory, it is mandatory. So we're gonna take the same thing, you can just basically copy the year, uh, month thing here, and just paste it in, okay? So year, uh, four y's, dash, double m, capital, dash, two d's, okay? No work. Everybody got that? So we can now go ahead and click on save. And notice I can go in and add multiple fields if I wanted to, we're not gonna do that here. So let's go ahead and click on create. And now we have our computed date, okay? But nothing is a data set without a register node. So the, the action that actually registers this into a data set is the register node. That is going to be this one, okay? Right up here. Again, that's in the slides as well. I tried to highlight the ones that I'm using. Um, so go ahead and click on the register. And again, I'm gonna call it a register underscore, uh, what should we call this, Dream Olay. Being very inventive here. The source node is going to be our compute expression because we wanna have our date field in. So we wanna have the extract, we also wanna have the date field. So we're gonna click on the computed date, or compute date. Now what do we wanna call our data set? We're gonna call it DreamLA, or you can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it DreamLA. Okay? And that's basically what is the API name and what is also the actual name, what is the label that we're seeing. You can always go up in all output fields to see what is actually output, what are the fields I'm getting here? And you can see that we are getting our date. Let's go ahead and click on the create. And now we've actually have an end-to-end -end data flow. We can of course make this more complex in the exercises. I show you how you can do a filter, so how you can apply and filter your data so you only see some of it. 
And I also show you how you can then start dropping some fields because now we created the new date fields. Do we really need the year field? Not really, right? So we can go in and drop those fields as well. So there's a few more exercises in the slides if you want to have a crack at that. But let's go ahead and click on the update data flow. Uh, so now we are saving those changes that we've done. And let's go ahead and click on the run data flow. And this is just saying that now everything is you know, running, it's all good, so we're gonna go ahead to the data monitor. And hopefully, in a little bit, this is where I tend to spam my, my refresh button to make sure that it's actually there. It took 14 seconds this time. I think it took like, I don't know, 20 something yesterday. Cool, so we have our new data set. So what we wanna go ahead and do is we want to go into Analytics Studio. So we wanna forget this for a little bit. Now, I'm going to go in and um, if you don't have it open, you can click on the gear icon and you can click on this Analytics Studio tab, okay? So, if I search here, you should hopefully see we have um, our Dream Olay. We should have two, right? So, we have our Dream Olay uh, and we have our Dream Olay. So, the recipe and the, the regular one. If I click on my recipe, I just want to show you one thing because sometimes we're changing the fields and they're not necessarily getting the nice values. Notice I have this little field tab here. I can now go in and say, well, my account type shouldn't be shown as account type. I want it to be account instead of a dot. I just want to have account type. So it's more user friendly for the end user to see. On top of that, I can actually click on this little arrow next to it. Oh, not today. It wants to scroll. Okay. And I can edit my values. Okay. So in here, I can go in and say, oh, I clicked on a wrong one. Doesn't matter. But I can go in and say, maybe I don't want this to be a certain value. Maybe I want this to be uh, called something different. So if I had before, I wanted to click on the account type. So if I had, um, I think it's customer and partner, that is by default. But if I wanted to call it client instead, or if I had um, uh, numbers in front of some, some of my, my stages, I could remove that. Um, so some of these things we can go ahead and do. And we can go ahead and change the color as well. So definitely remember this little field section. This is what going in and modifying what we call the XMD, which is extend metadata. So this is like our visual portrayal of our data set. I'm gonna cancel this. You can save it if you want. Uh, so I'm just gonna cancel it. With that shown, let's actually create a dashboard, okay? So let's go ahead and click on the create tab here. And let's go ahead and click on dashboard. Now it's very important, I need to remember to use the, uh, not Spain data, but to use the, uh, the new Dream Olay one we have. But we're gonna take the blank dashboard um, and we're gonna have now our canvas. So anything we put on our canvas is where we have all our, um, this is our layout. Uh, and if you click on the canvas, you'll see you also create the step. The step is the logic behind what you're showing, okay? Over here to our left, we have all the different widgets, which is our visual display of what we want to show. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on Create Step, and we're gonna take the Dream Olay that we created. So make sure you select the Dream Olay. Best practice, name this. So I'm gonna call this Time Series. Down in the bar length, okay, I am gonna select some of houses sold, okay? I wanna say I did my very best to use real data, but the fact is I don't speak Spanish, so I have absolutely no idea what I'm looking at. Um, so I just want you to know I did an effort, uh, but it might not be completely correct. Um, I had to do a few transformations for this. So we're selecting house sold, and uh, in the bars, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select the date field that we created. And we're gonna just select a year, um, which is the top one here, okay? So we now grouped it by year, and we have, um, uh, have an, um, sum of house prices. Not house prices, sorry, sum of houses sold, how many, okay? 
So we're going to go ahead and switch now to our table mode. So we're going to use our compare table. Um, and what we want to do here is we want to have a placeholder. We want to just, we need to create our predicted value. So all time series is all about creating a forecast. How many things are we going to sell in the future? Um, so we're going to click on the plus and just check any random things. So house is sold is fine. Now, next to it, notice we have this little arrow. If we click, as soon as we're in our compare table, we have a lot more functions. We're going to go ahead and edit this column. First best practice, give it a name. So I'm going to call this predict. And in the function here, I'm choosing the time series. Okay. There's a lot of different ones. You can also write your own formula if you want. Um, we're going to take the easy way and do the time series. What field do we want to predict? What is the, uh, how many do we want to forecast? Uh, how many years ahead? And also, if we want to include seasonality and, and choose the model, we're going to leave all as is. So just go ahead and click on apply. And you'll now see how things are changing. So we can click on this close button, not the done, but the close. And if we go over on our right side, we can go ahead and choose a chart. And we can select the suggested chart and we'll take the first one which is a timeline, okay? Now we have one that is our predicted and one that is our actuals. Now actually, if I switch to the formatting here, let me just collapse this general section. You notice I have my timeline chart. So we're gonna click on that and in the axis mode, instead of using small multiples, we're gonna have dual axis, no, single axis, single axis here. And it's kind of nice laying on top of each other now. With that done, you can go ahead and click done. <laughs> cool. So the next thing we want to do is, wouldn't it be cool if we can select on a map and it kind of shows us time series for that specific part? So we're going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and click one more step. Actually, let's just um, save first. Let's save it. So because this is like, like when we work in browsers, it's nice good just to save. So let's kind of call this Dream OLA and click on Save. OK. Let's go ahead and now click on the Create step once we have that. And we're going to select the Dream OLA one more time. And this time, we're going to call it Map. We're going to change the bar length to be the sum of houses sold again. And then we are going to take the bars, and this time we're grouping by area. Okay, So this is where there's probably going to be some regions in here. This mix of data. I wasn't sure what I was doing. <laughs> I did my best. Okay, So we want to be able to show these as a map. So we're going to go ahead and click on the charts. And scroll down, the, the third from the bottom is a map, so we're going to select the third from the bottom. And by default, it goes to world map, but there is nothing Malaga, it's not a country, so nothing is kind of being highlighted. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little paint roll, the formatting option underneath. And we're going to scroll down, and then you can see we have this map section, okay? So we're going to take that map select, uh, section, and right when it has map type, you can see these are all the different ones. Now, I have one down here, I think, that is called Custom Spain because I did this yesterday. I just wanted to make sure everything worked. Uh, you don't have that one, but we want to make sure you have that one now. So we're going to go ahead and click on this little plus. And this is the permission you need to have in your permission set. So if you don't have that at home, this is why. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to upload our GeoJSON. So click over here on the left side. And we're going to select from our desktop or whatever, wherever you have it stored, uh, the JSON that's called Spain Final. Okay? So the file that I made you download. And we're going to import that. We have to call that something. So I'm going to call it uh, V2. So I just, you don't have to do that. And click Save. Takes a little while. Do, do, do. That should hopefully look like Spain, right? So we then, in the map, we are not going to call it new map, or we're going to call it Spain. I'm going to call 
whoa, mine is starting to be a little bit slow, but I'm going to call it V2, by the way. Uh, again, you don't have to do that, but I want to make sure that you can see that I actually imported the right one and not having that from yesterday. And then click on Done. And there you go. We now have Spain custom map trying to show everything by region. So we can now go ahead and click on Done. And we can pull in our map like this. And we can now hit S key, that's a little shortcut, so we're saving it. And then hit on the preview, and you can now see that I select different areas, and the timeline changes. So we can add multiple things, and everything that we add in, so as soon as we select, it reacts, what we call faceting in our dashboard. So hopefully, that was a little cool thing. Some of our newer features, or at least the time series is. Uh, but I also really like the map function because it's visually uh, quite nice to look at um, an appearance view.